and my friends join the Pokemon Draft League. Every week we will face a new coach to determine who becomes the champion of the season. Will we make it to the top of the standings? What is going on today and welcome to the Pokemon Draft Dynasty Draft League. This week, the Opelucid Roaring Moons, sitting at 1 and 3, are facing up against the Centret Havens, sitting at 3 and 1. Our opponent has a very scary team with Chiyu and Slokin Gala rounding out their top end, and they also have Terra Cyclosar and Terra Hoopa. They also have Eviolite Bisharp, which is brand new this gen, and a Lycanroc Dust that runs through our team. Are we going to be able to pull out the win this week? Let's look at the team that's going to try to do that and find out. First, we are starting off with Lenny the Garchomp. We're actually just bringing the Choice Scarf this week because if you look at our opponent's team, they don't have a Fairy. So Choice Scarf, Outrage, and Earthquake actually goes in versus him. Obviously, we have Rough Skin, and the last two moves we're just carrying is Dragon Claw and Sleep Talk with enough speed to make sure that we're outspeeding the Chiyu that is on his team. Next, we have Booby the Gengar with the Focus Sash and Curse Body ability. We're bringing Nasty Plot, Shadow Ball, Energy Ball, and Sludge Bomb with enough speed to speed tie the Lycanroc Dusk. We're making sure that if they do bring the Ditto, that means that we are going to be able to win that 1v1 because Ditto won't kill us and we'll be able to kill it back. Next is two Chainsaws, the Low Kicks. We're actually bringing Life Orb this week with Tinted Lens with First Impression, Axe Kick, Sucker Punch, and U-Turn. And we're going to be the Fighting Terra type. That way if the Lycanroc wants to come in and accelerate us, we can just Terra Fighting and resist that and kill back. Next is Deontay the Deancey with Chesto Berry, Clear Body, Spikes, Diamond Storm, Moonblast, and Rest. And we're running most everything in spadef because this chiyu runs through our team and we need, we need to make sure that we can take every hit from chiyu that we can and get a rest off to heal back up to full and pressure this thing out with diamond storm or moonblast next is a fun set we have blue mario the thunderous therian with salic berry volts absorb we're actually running a physical thunderous set this week with bulk up acrobatics wild charge and brick break this is mostly because thunderous is never going to break through the slow king but at the same time it's because thunderous versus my team is actually a little bit scary and if the ditto does want to come in and become my thunderous that's not great for us so so this thunderous is not going to be able to touch my garchomp because if he has acrobatics he'll still be holding his choice scarf which means acrobatics isn't going to do that much and obviously brick break is not going to do a lot to the garchomp so anytime the ditto wants to disguise itself as my thunderous we can always go Garchomp and pressure the rest of his team really, really well. Lastly is Fun Size Tinkaton. We're actually carrying Leftovers with Mold Breaker this week, which is Stealth Rock, Play Rough, Knock Off, and Thunder Wave. If we can get a Thunder Wave off on the Slokin Galar, it has to break through Para to make sure that it can get Slack Offs off. And Stealth Rock is good because obviously we want the Chiyu to be taking damage every time it hits the field. And that is the team this week. Pretty straightforward, pretty quick. Would you have done anything different? If you would have, let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, don't forget to like and subscribe. Only about 30% of the people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you've been watching the videos, just make sure you're subscribed. Sometimes you're not and you don't even know. So just check it for me. But let's jump right into the battle. So I actually forgot to click record at the select screen, but the six of my opponent brought are Chiyu, Quagsire, Cyclozar, Slokin Gala, Rotom Wash, and Ditto. So we straight up just led our low kicks to try to get a first impression or U-turn off on anything that wanted to lead and they lead the Rotom. Uh, we're just going to U-turn here because it'll do good chip to the Rotom, which is great for us for Garchomp. And we actually figure out that they are Scarf Will-O-Wisp. Um, and that was very lucky for us to dodge that Will-O-Wisp. Uh, already on turn one, we've got a good amount of luck in our favor because if two change house gets burned there, we have a hard time putting pressure on the rest of the team uh, with it. So, so we're going to bring in the Gengar here. And I just want to click Sludge Bomb because it does a lot to the rest of the team. We're going to be able to scout out any kind of item or damage on the Soaking Galar if it wants to come in. And it does slightly more than Shadow Ball. It should kill the Rotom at this range. The Rotom should want to switch out here. And they go right into their Slokin Galar. And we hit it with the Sludge Bomb. And they are revealed to be AV, but not Spadef AV. This is probably a more physically defensive Slokin with AV based off the damage. So we go right into our Tinga Time because we can eat up the Sludge Bomb or the Psychic they want to go for, which is what they do. They go straight for the Psychic. And here I just want to get my rocks up pretty early because we want to make sure that Shiyu is pressured when coming onto the field and has a timer anytime it comes onto the field because it can only come in four, maybe five times if they EV correctly. So they're gonna switch out, probably not wanting to take the knockoff and go right into the Quagsire, which Quagsire is actually kind of a problem for us because we don't have any really great switch into it right now. I could go Thunder Hysteria, but obviously I'm not carrying Grass Knot. So I just decide that I'm gonna go Gengar and if they want an Earthquake, then we can eat it up with our Focus Sash. They actually Stealth Rock. So that means we can stay in here and Nasty Plot, or we can go straight for the Energy Ball, but I think Nasty Plotting here is the correct play because we can do a huge chunks of the Slow King if they do want to switch that in after we've got the Nasty Plot off, which means we'll actually two hit KO with our Shadow Ball at that point. So they stay in with the Quagsire and they go for the 
Earthquake and take us down to our Sash. And here I'm just going to Energy Ball because I'm, I'm guessing Shaded doesn't think that I have Energy Ball. So I doubt that they're going to switch out into the Slow King, especially with me at plus two now. And they do just give us Quagsire, which is huge for us because Quagsire could eat up a lot of hits from our team and just recover. And now is kind of scary for us because obviously they have a Choice Scarf Gengar that's also at plus two. I decided I'm just going to let my Gengar go down because my Deancey and my Tinkaton can both take a hit uh, from the plus two Gengar which means that I can just go Tinkaton here and click knockoff and either get rid of the scarf or they've got to switch out and not take that knockoff. So the Tinkaton comes out and we click knockoff and they actually switch in to their Slokin Galar and we see they were Assault Vest just like we thought. Um, and here I am predicting that they're just going to go for the fire move. I, th I think Ice Wing here is a little overzealous at this point in the game. So I'm not too afraid to go into the guard shop. Obviously it would be sucky if we got burned off of the flamethrower. But luckily we don't. And now Garchomp is free to just click a move. I can choose to click Earthquake or Dragon Claw. I'm a little scared to click Dragon Claw because if I do and this stays in and Ice Beams me, that's not great. But if I click Earthquake and it go Rotom, that's not horrible for us. I would rather that outcome than not kill with Dragon Claw. So we click the Earthquake, they switch out, and we see they go right into the Rotom Wash like we thought. But Rotom is going to take that chip and can't heal it off because we've seen that they're not leftovers. And... Rotom doesn't get pain split in this gen, so they actually can't heal off any of this damage. And it gives us a free entry into our Thunderous, because if they want to Will-O-Wisp, that's fine. Uh, Thunderous isn't that important to the team at this point. And if they want a Hydro Pump, that's also fine. But they actually go straight for the trick. So we're going to receive a Choice Scarf here. They're going to get our Salak Berry. And I'm just going to click Wild Charge. There's no reason for me not to. Um, we'll kill the Rotom if it hits. If they switch out, we'll just respond accordingly. They could go into their Ditto and eat the wild charge because they would get bolts absorb which is exactly what they're going to do they're going to go right into their ditto transform get the volts absorb and we're actually going to heal the ditto up a little bit but that's not bad for us because most of our pokemon were built to 1v1 the ditto anyways and like i said because this thing can't hit garchomp this is just free entry into garchomp so it goes straight into garchomp as garchomp comes out we actually see that he clicked bulk up i don't know if that was a misclick or not but it's still fine uh the Garchomp was built, so it didn't take a lot of damage from the Thunderous anyways, and they obviously couldn't Volt Switch or U-Turn because we didn't give it that move. So they would have had to make a double, which they weren't going to do anyways. And here, I can just click a Dragon move, because if the Slow King wants to come in, it obviously dies to two Dragon moves, and the Thunderous would have died to the Dragon move too. And we get the prediction of the Rotom. As Rotom comes in, we kill with the Dragon Claw. So now Cyclozar comes out, and this thing is the Terra Captain, so it's probably going to Terra here and not let me just straight up kill it with Dragon Claw again. Uh, so we switch out and we go into our Thunderous because it is the least important member on the team at this point. And we are going to see they Terrorizalize into the Steel type. They actually just straight up Draco Meteor the Thunderous. And now Garchomp gets to come back in and lock into EQ because nothing on the team resists it. We kill the Cyclozar that's in front of us. We would kill the Slow King if it switches in. And uh, if Ditto wants to come in, obviously it's going to be Garchomp and it's going to take a lot from the Earthquake. So they do switch out and they go back into the Slow King Galar and we click Earthquake here and we actually don't kill. They were max defense, but that's fine because we can just click it again because we're faster. And after this, Shady goes into his Chi Yu. So I'm guessing that he was a Scarf Chi Yu and doesn't know that we're Scarf Garchomp yet, uh, which means I can just click Earthquake again because obviously we're Scarf Garchomp and we're going to be faster than a Scarf Chi Yu. So the Earthquake goes off and we kill the Chi Yu. So that's actually really good for us too. And now my opponent is kind of out of options on what to do. They have to go to the Ditto. And it's a really hard call for them because I have two fairies. Both are weak to EQ, but clicking a dragon move into Garchomp right now for them would be kind of hard for them to do because I have two fairies. So they do click the Earthquake. We sack the Deancey because the Deancey was only here for the, the Chi Yu and Chi Yu is gone now. So Deancey is not really that important to us anymore. And I don't really want to risk a speed tie war with their Garchomp now because if they win both speed ties with both EQs, they kill us if we win both speed ties we win and it's just not safe so i want to put it in range of my own eq that way it doesn't matter if i win the speed tie or not so i can come in and just first impression here and put it in range of eq so we get the first impression off and it is well in range of our own eq and it's going to earthquake us here and we're actually going to be able to get off another hit because we actually didn't die to the earthquake so we get the sucker punch off and the rough skin plus our life orb is going to take us down here but that's okay. We can go straight back into our own Garchomp and just EQ the Cyclozar that's left because, again, it is a Steel-type, and we outspeed because 
I don't think that they are Scarf, Lycanroc, and if they are, then obviously they would have to lock Draco, Tinko, tell them to come in and be immune. So that is going to be our first win since week two and kind of meta in a lot of leagues. I am on a huge losing streak in a lot of leagues right now, um, but mostly Paldea leagues. But that is going to be another win. We are now sitting at two and three plus zero. Uh, so even better in the playoff standings for us. And as long as we can win, I think two games uh, out of the three that we have left, I think we can sneak in the playoffs. So hopefully we can. But as far as that game goes, I think uh, I think we played it pretty well all around. I think um, the Scarf Guard Champ was just a good bring. Um, not really a lot I would do different this time. Not really because I won. Like I, I'm very used to looking at things I could do different when I win, but I will say that Shaded's team is different now. My team is also different, a little bit for, a foreshadowing to next week. Um, so if we do have to face Shaded again, the prep will for sure have to be different because of the changes that he made at the end of week five. So we will talk about that a little bit more once that game comes up, if it comes up again. But I told you guys, we're not out yet. We're still winning games, so <laughs> stick around and uh, that's going to be it. So if you like what you saw, like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next one. See ya.